So it's December. We're How to Cook Like a Bajan. This is our celebratory series. I am Chef Rhea Jilt. And as usual, all we're gonna talk about today is food, 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 and what we're gonna eat. It's what we do. Now, I'm going to tell you why we're doing Jug Jug and Pepper Pot today. It's basically because I'm malicious. So, what had happened was, Brian works at my restaurant. Well, he's Guyanese and his mother made pepper pot for him and he brought it to work last Christmas. So I was like, mm, what's that? And he was like, oh, this pepper pot. And I was like, I've never had pepper pot before. So I beg you. <laughs> In any case, it was very tasty and I was intrigued. So I thought for Christmas this year, not only would I do traditional Bajan jug jug, but I'm going to go next door to our friends in Guyana and bring up some pepper pot. Now you know how I like cassava and how I like my ground provisions and I always want you to buy local this and that and the third. Well, not only does castorite, is castorite made from the cassava juice and spices and sugar and whatnot, and it works kind of like a browning, but apparently it has all these antiseptic properties. And that is the reason why pepper pot can just sit and sit and you can keep adding to it and keep it on, as people say, the back of the stove without it becoming bad. It's amazing. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit as we go through this particular setup. So first things first, let me grab my meat. So we have our beef from BADMC. We also have our rabbit, so that's Barbados Agricultural Society. Um, we have some ox still, um, all of our vegetables and that kind of thing. And that was a fun trip as well. So first we're gonna season this up. We're gonna get some salt, Gonna get some pepper. We're gonna get some garlic. We're gonna get some thyme. Oops. And we're gonna get some onions. Mm -hmm. Now all of this is mixed up. You rub it in. Get those guys mixed together. Good. So, back to this cassery. So you get the um, cassava juice and you squeeze it out and then you boil it and you put in sugar and spices and it turns into this uh, lovely dark colored liquid. It's kind of bitter and it's kind of sweet. But I think the most interesting part is that when you put on a pepper pot, apparently, so I'm gonna put my sugar and start caramelizing it while I'm chatting away my life, right? I said caramelize, not burn. Please, please do not l lose sight of your sugar. Right? Right, so as I was saying, you can basically put on a pepper pot and you, you slow cook it, so it cooks for hours and hours. And therein after, you can add meat to this pepper pot. And as long as you continue adding ca new castor to the pepper pot, it apparently can still sit indefinitely. There's a legend in Grenada that Betty Maskell kept a, pet, a pepper pot going for 100 years, a whole century. I do not know how true, but I thought I would share that with you, that this is a legendary thing in the Caribbean. Pepper pot, cassery, a living pot that goes on and on and on, if you can manage to sustain it. So you put in new meat, you add new cassery, you boil, you keep, you get it warm, and it continues to live, and you never move it from the back of the stove. Not really sure why it's a Christmas custom in Guyana specifically. Maybe they're really busy putting up their house and taking it down like we are, and they need to have food on the go that doesn't need um, constant input, and maybe that's a good idea for us this Christmas. You know, if you're busy going, and days are short, so you need to get in the bank, you need to get the supermarket, you need to get everything done, and you can't get it done because there's curfew or whatever. Right, so I don't want to burn my sugar because that will look peculiar. So we're just getting it. Look at that nice brown color. 
Yes. It's all melted. All right, we're going to need to wrap it first. So, get that in so you can seal in this color and this flavor. Ooh, yes. And you're all still. Not going to overload the pan. Get everybody in with a little color. And of course, the flavor and the aromatics have already started. And here already smell interesting. They already smell interesting. And I'm gonna go in with my beef. Not everybody's sat. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna let it sit a little bit and get some color on it. So after this, after we have set our pepper pot up in our slow cooker, we're gonna run directly over to some jug. Yes, I know, it's Christmas, so jug is automatic. You're anxious for me to get to it. And jug is a kind of similar sort of dish as well, because it has lots of bits and bobs of meat in it. Oh, almost forget to put in the pork. I, I would like to apologize. Another good addition is apparently salt beef. Anything like that, salt pork, you can, your pepper pot is your own business. Oh, wow, look at that. I hope my Caribbean brethren are with me and supporting my attempt to create a non Barbadian dish. So, hello to everybody in the wider Caribbean. If you're watching, I try anything, you know? But that's very pretty, eh? at the golden brown caramelization that is coming on everything. It smells amazing. Too bad it's gonna take like two days to cook. <laughs> All right, so get a little space. I'm gonna take out a little bit of the rabbit so you can get a little space for the pork and everything else to cook. You know, gaze upon the wonderfulness that is my rabbit. Then give me a little space in the frying pan to get my business right. Okay, so everything is lovely and brown. Um, I'm gonna start putting things into my, oops, messy. I'm gonna start think, putting things into my pressure cooker, my slow cooker, because this, this does everything, yeah? You can pressure cook, slow cook, stew. You can put it on, keep warm. You could do whatever, it, it works as a rice cooker. This is my multi-pot, instant pot whatever you want to call it, pot. Um, and you know, I'm just thinking that Brian shared his uh, pepper pot with me, and now I'm sharing my first attempt to make it with you. And you know, Christmas is really about sharing and family. Um, at Christmas, my family gets together. There's quite a few of us. We like to have different culture Christmas. So every year we pick a culture or a country and have a giant Christmas meal that, you know, really just respects that particular culture and you get different things to eat. Um, I don't always have a traditional Bajan Christmas, um, but it's so much fun. I remember one year I wanted to do African inspired Christmas, you know, how I like my African parent outfit, hello, yes. And so I called my friend in Ethiopia <laughs> so she could talk me through making the cassava bread that they make. Now when they make their cassava bread, and this is now another use of cassava, so it fits in re really well. When they make their cassava bread, they put it to ferment. So it takes about three days to make this dish. And it really was lovely. And since my family watched way too much African movies, they were duly impressed with my prowess in producing an African Christmas. So there was pounded de yam, there was jollof rice. Everybody was like, oh, I see the ancestors, you know, they have blessed you. And I said, thank you very much. It's kind of you to mention it. And we had a really lovely Christmas. So I'm getting some scotch bonnet, some onions. So I'm going to saute these. And that will add to the aromatics of our pepper pot. And the rest of the garlic goes in now. Yes, it does. Just going to take a minute or two. And then I'm going to put in my salt. So I didn't use dried bouillon cubes. So I used beef stock. All right, so we get these a little bit, then I'm gonna put in my salt and my castorite and my water, get it hot, get it in there, 
set it and is on to Jug Jug. Ooh! Sadly, y'all can't be here in the mix with me, but it's good fun. So I believe at this point, according to my research, we're gonna put in some cassari, some bittersweet. Oops! Uh, try not to uh, overdo it. We're gonna put in some beef stock. Mm -hmm. Enough to cover this situation, but not to drown it. And you're gonna let that boil up. Okay, so our stock and cassari and our herbs and aromatics, they're coming to a boil. Nice and hot. Okay, I'm going to take these into my slow cooker. I'm gonna cover those and I'm gonna put the lid on and then we're gonna switch over to get our jug jug ready. And actually, let's get our pigeon peas out. All right, we're gonna get them in the pot right there. Get our salt meat in there. Little water. And we're gonna get those cooking as well. There you go. Look at that. So we're going straight inside before our liquid. Have a little water left, so I'm making sure I get all of my flavors inside there. And then not leaving out a little bit left on my pan. There we go. Make sure it all get in there. That's all the flavor. I can't leave it out. Mm -hmm. Make sure everything is covered but not swimming in the liquid according to our recipe. Good, good. Everybody in. Put in my scallion, my green onion, my chives, whatever you want to call it. And then I'm going to lock it in. A slow cook. Gonna give it six hours set. There you go. And we're started. Yes. So that's another six hours or so before we see that dish back again, unfortunately. But that's okay, because we have another fun thing to do. So let me find my dish while these peas cook and get set up to do the jug jug. Come home to the place you love, the sights, the sounds, the feelings. Come home to the taste you love. So bring home the flavor. Bring home the ham with farmer's choice. Bring home the flavor. Bring home the ham with farmer's choice. Right, so I have my dish. I'm going to get butter it up now. I'm gonna gonna grease it. Uh-huh. Always get your finish thing done first. So whatever pan or pot you're gonna go into, <laughs> make sure you secure it. I remember several times in the kitchen, you start doing something and you don't secure all your bits and bobs before you start. And when you finish somebody else off the pan and in the oven and you just sit in there looking like you don't know what you're doing. So never again. Always Find all the things you need for your recipe before you start your recipe. Next thing you know, your sister out there so making a shepherd's pie or something and you're hunting to pour you jugging. <laughs> I will laugh at you. Don't let it happen. It happened to me before. Don't let it happen to you. So I'm going to put this one side. Alright, so we're just going to strain this off. Mm -hmm. Alright. Well, that sits there and contemplates its ways. And I'm going to get my frying pan because the next thing that I'm going to do here, get some chicken. So instead of, say, putting in some pork or what, or beef or whatever, I've chosen today to do my jug with um, some chicken because you, you can, I have salt pork already. And it's really up to you what you want to incorporate into your jug. Um, 
I'm using these nice pigeon peas from Valorico. You can use fresh peas. But you know, dry peas are something you should always have in your pantry. They're good, clean protein. They're a good staple. They keep well. Obviously, they're very nutritious. Um, if you're contemplating being a vegetarian or making changes to your diet, then you want a good source of variety of peas, so you can check Valrico for those. So we got some pigeon peas here. Now I'm going to get a little oil. Get some sunflower oil from our friends at Waitrose. And I know <laughs> That has been tough getting things out of the supermarket and whatnot recently. It's been very difficult. Sometimes you see a product, sometimes you just don't, right? So, get my chicken. Don't need to cover anymore. Salt and pepper. But I did find everything I needed at Massey stores, definitely. So that that's the place to go if you if you need. Aha! Hear that sizzle? That's the place to go. And then, do not forget to collect your Massey points. So I'm going to fry my chicken. I'm going to put some herbs in. That's all going to get a nice flavor. And I'm going to put my green seasoning in. And as soon as I get some color on this, I'm gonna get some liquid from over here. So I can just put this down. And cook that chicken in the same liquid. So we're maintaining flavor. We're maintaining flavor. We're putting it back in all the time. So I'm just get some color on this chicken. Get these flavors locked in. This could be pork. This could be beef. This could be whatever meat. But you know, chicken, white meat is generally generally what we go with. So I'm looking forward to Christmas. I don't know about you. It's going to be an interesting <laughs> Christmas in the pandemic. This is something that we've now maybe gone accustomed to. I don't know what your plans are. Feel free to share that information with us as well. We want to know how maybe pandemic has affected your Christmas plans or what's been different for you these last, well that first Christmas and, and now going forward. like. I know you're getting your jug and you're getting your turkey and everything else, but like, did family travel home and they're not coming anymore? Did you go over there? Could you not find the ingredient that you need for your Christmas that you're wondering where it is? Maybe shout us out, maybe we know. Maybe somebody will answer, you know. Interact with us because we like it. So it began some nice golden brown on the chicken. I like that. Color is lovely, everything smells good. I'm gonna just put some liquid in there. Drop my heat so my chicken can soften up. I'm gonna fish out my bits of salt meat because I'm going to blend this now in the food processor. All right. I don't blend all of it, I'm telling you now, because I like little little bits and bobs in my jug jug, but some people like their smoothest paste, so if that is the case, you can blend all of your peas. So I just take that out, because that's not gonna go in the blender. Leave the chicken to cook down. If I can find a cover, yes. My handy dandy food processor forward. Block the cameraman shot, if I can. <laughs> Doesn't make his life difficult, because when y'all can't see, he makes my life difficult. So, turnabout is fair play and all of that. And I'm leaving a handful to get bits and bobs in my situation. Clip it. Pulse, pulse, pulse. And I'm just going to add a little liquid. Let's so that any flavor don't get away. There we go. And now, hi. And you're going to pause it because my chicken should be done. I'm going to blitz that in there as well. 
I'm gonna just add a few of these. I'm gonna put these in here as well. Turn this off for now. Yeah, it splits as well. So we can go on to our next step. It's a very interesting dish. I'm going to do some more research and find out where we came up with this one. So I'm going to start with a little water. And a quarter cup of guinea corn flour. Almost like I'm starting a roux. Now once that's nice and smooth, I'm going to start adding in a little bit of my hot liquid. Starts to thicken up almost immediately and that is the magic of guinea corn flour, yeah? Okay, so we're looking good there. Just going to wander over here and grab our peas. I'm gonna get them in the pot. So I'm thinking jug jug, turkey, we're gonna have ham. Like what else are we gonna have for Christmas? Sorrel, I guess I definitely need some sorrel. I'm gonna have, well, you know I'm having some form of monkey and great cake for sure. And then maybe some banks. Um, but you know what I like for Christmas? If I'm having banks rather than drink it straight like that, I like shandies. All right, so this is now we're gonna thicken this up. I'm gonna add the peas at the end, the ones that aren't made into a piece. Okay, so I'm just gonna blitz up this pork that I had earlier. I don't want that, ah, it's out of my way right there. I don't want, I wanna add this into the jug, but obviously, salt pork, you know. I boiled it, it's nice and soft, but I want little small bits, so. Pulse, pulse. Yeah, that's small enough. I don't want it that I can't see it. There you go. Salt pork in. Right, so we have been whisking for our lives here as we get our jug jug to thicken up so you could barely move the whisk in the pan just barely okay now as it cools it's going to get firmer and firmer why did that drop in there naughty very bad don't want them wet right so let's add in the larger bits of peas at this point get those stirred in my rustic touch, okay? So all the goodness is in here. It's not officially Christmas. You're welcome. I did it for you. Get it in the pan. It's been nicely buttered. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Gonna let this cool and set. Possibly put it in the fridge. We'll be back for the great reveal. And sometime in the future, we'll also get a peek at that pepper pot. And here we have it, our finished jug jug. Of course, we put it to set. Um, now I've turned it out. Now normally, you could put some butter on top of this, maybe some breadcrumbs if you want. Pop it in the oven, brulee the top. But I'm like anxious to taste it because I'm always anxious to eat things. And I'm suggesting that it's Christmas and if you want to be fancy, be like me, get you some nice edible flowers because Jug Jug doesn't look particularly appealing. It's not the prettiest dish on your menu. So maybe you want to do something different to make it pop. So you put a little color on it. So we have some lovely edible flowers here to so maybe decorate this corner. So as to astonish your relatives, you know, look at me. I've got some sexy flowers on my Jug Jug. 
So it's a new topping. This is exciting. See how pretty, yes. And we're gonna taste just a little smidgen to reassure ourselves, you know, for quality purposes. Texture is good. I have a little bits and bobs that I can that I can eat. See there now? It's Christmas. Mm. Mm. A little salt pork. Some herbs. A few peas to chew on. The only problem with this situation is I pepper water and yet. But we will be back and we will have pepper pot. See you in a bit. Yeah, I know, I know, y'all thought I would never ever finish. I thought I would never ever finish, but <laughs> here we are, pepper pot. So, without further ado, let's get in. Get myself a bowl of the good stuff. Let's get, find every little, ooh, find an art sale, yes. All right, Rhea, all right, you, you've proven your point. Get inside this stew. Well, it looked right. I don't want to claim that it, look, that it tastes like Brian's mommy's pepper pot, but it tastes similar to what I remember tasting last year. That's all I can say. I, I don't eat it regular. I, I had it once. So I'm not a pepper pot expert. But it looked like it and it tastes like it to me. So when you try the recipe, you let us know because we want to see and hear from you. So this right here, right here, is us getting ready for Christmas on how to cook like a Bajan. I'm Chef Rhea Jilts. I've had a fun, fun day. I look forward to hearing from you and sharing some Christmas traditions. Thank you and see you next week. Hi, I'm Ryan Adamson, uh, Mount Gaze Mixologist. And today I'm going to do a cocktail for you called The Last Show. It's a very simple cocktail, um, four ingredients, uh, fantastic flavors. Today we're going to be using some freshly brewed coffee, a nice cherry syrup, the black bar rum, and of course, this time of the year, some sorrel. So let's get started. I like to start by adding some ice to my mixing jar. And as I said, it's a very simple cocktail. Uh, we're using one ounce each of fresh brewed coffee. One ounce of a nice cherry syrup. Has a deep red color. We're going for one ounce of my favorite rum, the Mount Gay Black Barrel Rum. Fantastic flavors which are going to just come alive in this cocktail. And then we're doing one ounce of PhD sorrel drink. And then we're going to give this cocktail a nice stir. The reason I'm stirring the cocktail is just because I want to bring the flavors together nicely without agitating them or waking them up too much too, nor too much dilution added to the cocktail. We're going to strain it into our martini glass. Look at that color. Fantastic. 
Then we're garnishing with a rosemary, a sprig of rosemary. Just want to wake it up a slightly. Awaken those aroma, aromas. And we're going to just finish it off by accentuating with a nice Bruce Bruce aromatic. And there we go, the last show. Keep you and your family safe with Sol Gas. Here are some helpful tips to keep you and your family safe when cooking with Sol Gas. Never tamper with the cylinder and only use the Sol approved regulator and a hose designed for use with LPG. Securely connect the regulator to the cylinder valve until it clicks into place and is properly fastened and secured. It is important to check the hose clips and the rubber hose to ensure they are in good working condition and properly secured. It is important to check your hose and regulator and change them as needed. Change your rubber hose every two years. Change your regulator every five years. If there are signs of damage to your regulator, contact an approved Sol gas distributor or a Sol service station for replacement immediately. Safety first with Sol gas.